thing to acknowledge is that the softball team came in fourth place out of all the world. Yay! That is quite an accomplishment. So, um, I guess um, Pastor Bershey and, and the whole crew that went up there, I guess there were a lot of people up there from here. You can't hear me? Uh, okay, I'll try it now. How's that? Okay. Um, they'll be coming back today, and Pastor Bershey will be back uh, next Sunday. I guess he's got a few other things to do between now and then. He'll be back on, on job tomorrow. Um, I'm pleased to be here with you today on this side of the pew, and um, I don't know any announcements. Anybody else know an announcement? Okay. Very good. Then... Um, We'll begin with the processional hymn. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. We admit, O Lord, that we often do not freely respond to your grace. We admit that we have not always shared the compassion, compassionate concern of Paul. We rejoice in having faith, but do not always share the joy of our faith with the people around us. Forgive us and open our eyes to see the opportunities to tell of our faith. Give us compassionate hearts to care for those who have rejected our Savior's sacrifice for all people. We admit that we have not always considered the needs of others before our own, nor have we considered how you might use us and our gifts for their welfare. Forgive us and increase our faith in you. Move us by your Holy Spirit to be part of the answer to their prayers, for we are your instruments to meet the needs of the people around us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus, Son of God and Son of David, kept God's eternal covenant. With his suffering and death, he paid the price for you, so that grace might be freely offered to you. You are counted as children of Abraham because of the faith God has planted within you. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, at his command and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Rest assured, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated as we hear the readings of Holy Scripture. The Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know. And a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 13. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit. 
that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs. From them their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belongs to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said, About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born, and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. She was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We read the psalmody responsibly as it is printed. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. To him who alone does great wonders. To him who by understanding made the heavens. To him who spread out the earth above the waters. To him who made the great lights. The sun to rule over the day. The moon and stars to rule over the night. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the gradual hymn.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. The Gospel lesson is the recounting of the feeding of the 5,000. Now, when Jesus heard this, and we really have to look back to the verse before, John the Baptist had been beheaded, and after his disciples buried him, they came and told Jesus. And when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise we join in confessing the faith of the Christian church in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for remission of sins, I know for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated, and the children may come forward now for the children's message, please. Let's see if I can get this all straight. I come around this way so I get in front of you, right? Okay. Mm, that's a big step there. Mm. Okay, anybody else coming? Hi. I'm going down here. I tell you what, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to sit right here. Is that okay with y'all? Okay. Otherwise, somebody's going to have to help me up. <laughs> oh, my. Been a hot week, hasn't it? What have you all been having for, for meals? Anybody have any watermelon? Watermelon's good to eat when it's hot, isn't it? What else do you eat? Pizza? What do you do... If you eat, have pizza for supper, but you don't eat the whole pizza, what do you do with it? 
Ah, put it in the fridge for leftovers. That's exactly the word I wanted, leftovers. Because, looky here. I've got something here. If you looked in the refrigerator and you were hungry and you found things like this, what would you expect to find in them. These are empty. But what would you expect to find? Okay, dress salad dressing. Yeah. Yeah, okay, maybe some spaghetti there. And you could put it in a bowl and pop it in the microwave and have a spaghetti dinner. What, anything else you might find? Pizza wouldn't fit in here, would it? No. But you could find pizza maybe in the, in the refrigerator. What else? What? Chicken, yeah. Okay. It might, be, it might be fried chicken. It might be baked chicken. It might be chicken spaghetti. But they'd be in these kind of containers, and they'd be leftovers, wouldn't they? Can you live on leftovers? Mm, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, ha I know one person who said that they didn't eat leftovers in their house. Hmm, wow. We often have leftovers. In fact, my wife tells me when we have leftovers, that's even better because we don't have to cook the next day, right? Yeah. Well, what we read a little while ago about Jesus when he felt so... Sorry for the people who had followed him out in a faraway place from any town. And it came to the evening and they were hungry. And Jesus felt sorry for them because they didn't have anything to eat. What did he do? That's what the disciples said. Send them away and let them get their own food. Jesus said, no, you feed them. And they said, we don't have anything to feed them with except these five loaves of bread and two fish. And they're small fish. And Jesus said, well, bring that to me. And they did. And you know what Jesus did with them? He fed 5,000 men and their wives and children. 5,000 families out there. And he fed them all with just five loaves and two fish. Yes. That's a good question. He just started breaking pieces off and giving them to the disciples, and the disciples took those pieces out and fed them. And it didn't, it didn't come to an end until everyone was satisfied. You know what satisfied means, right? You had plenty. You had plenty. You didn't need any more. You were satisfied. And that's the way Jesus feeds us his love. He feeds us his love so much that we have all we need and then some left over. Because after they were through eating, the disciples went around with baskets and they gathered up all the pieces that people hadn't eaten and they had 12 baskets full of leftovers. Bigger baskets than this. They had 12 baskets left over. What do you think they did with them? Right. They didn't throw them away. They probably took them back to the villages and fed the people there who were hungry. Yes. Right. God doesn't want us to be wasteful. So they didn't throw them away. They took them back and fed them to people who weren't out there who were hungry. Now, what Jesus has done for us is he's given us his love. Until we're satisfied, we don't need any more because it's every bit that we need is forgiveness. But there's some left over. What are you going to do with it? We don't want to be wasteful, right? It's his forgiveness and his love. So what do we do? Okay, good. We feed it to children 
who need to hear about God's love. Absolutely right. Because God has given us so much, there's plenty to share. And we want to share it with everyone who needs to know God's love. Well, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your love. So much we have plenty. And even some left over. Help us to share that love with others as we tell them about you. Amen. Okay. Now, what's this for? Oh. Wow. Do you think there's enough there to share and have some left over? <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you feed us freely and generously with rich spiritual food that gives forgiveness, life, and salvation. From your spiritual banquet, we have received all that we need and much more besides. Bounty enough to share joyfully with our neighbors. Place your covenant in our hearts and your promise on our lips 
that nations may be drawn to the meal of your grace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a confession to make. I used to enjoy all-you-can-eat banquets, buffets. But now I find that I can't eat enough to make them worthwhile. Well, that's kind of the way it goes. So I go into an all-you-can-eat banquet, and I order that. I have one plate full. And the waiter comes and says, how about another plate full? You know, it's all you can eat. And I said, yeah, and that's all I can eat. <laughs> In our text, Isaiah describes God's love to us as an all-you-can-eat banquet. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. So God, speaking through Isaiah, describes his feast of salvation as an all-you-can-eat banquet that is absolutely free, without cost. All you can eat, and at no cost. How can that be? Well, I'll tell you what. Yesterday, I had a meal in a restaurant that didn't cost me anything. Beth and I had friends from Houston visiting, and we went to eat at, at the Gathery in Belleville. Uh, that's that's a, a, not a paid political ad, but anyway. <laughs> we ate at the Gathery, and when we got through, I said to my friend, we can split this right down the middle. And he said, I already took care of it. I ate for nothing, Right? And that's kind of the way we often encounter meals. For example, I think that our potluck meals here at church are kind of like that. You know, a potluck meal. People are invited to stay after church, whether they brought anything or not, right? Come, come to the potluck meal. It's free. It's not that it didn't cost somebody something, right? But it didn't cost you, if you didn't bring anything, and you're still welcome to eat there. And that's kind of like Isaiah is saying God's banquet is. It's all you can eat at no cost to you, but at great expense. Let's explore that a little bit. If you go back a couple of chapters in Isaiah, to Isaiah 53, you find there one of, of, of what we call Isaiah's servant songs. It's a song about the suffering servant of God. We know it. We use it every Lent, repeatedly, over and over, and you'll recognize some of those, those lines if I get them right. Let's see. He was... <laughs> you know... Luther was absolutely right. He said, get one translation of the Bible and stick with it. Because if you use one and then you use one, another one and another one, you get all confused. Well, I started out with King James, and I had RSV, and then I had NIV, and now we're using ESV. But it was something like this. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was laid upon him. By his wounds we are healed. Now that is a meal that is quite costly, but not to us. The expense has been paid by God's suffering servant. 
And that suffering servant is Jesus. He's the one who paid for this all-you-can-eat spiritual banquet of salvation. And you and I are the ones who are invited to receive it. Wow, what a blessing. Because on the cross of Calvary, when Jesus gave his life, in his, uh, his life into God's hands for you and for me, it covered our sins. It gave promise of resurrection when Christ rose from the dead. And it shows us the place that he has for us in his promises. That's the spiritual banquet that Isaiah is talking about here in our text. So Isaiah describes this spiritual banquet as at no cost. He also describes it as having no wasted calories. You know what wasted calories are, don't you? I'm reminded of this often. Don't waste your calories. It takes about maybe 2,000 calories uh, is that a day or a meal? I don't know. I'd like to make it a meal, but I think it's a day. <laughs> 2,000 calories a day is about what you need to survive. And so if you eat stuff that is delicious, but it's not nutritious, somewhere you have to taper off because you don't want to go way over that 2,000 calories, you know, 3,000 and you know what happens. Don't waste your calories. And that's exactly what Isaiah is telling us, God speaking through Isaiah, that there are no wasted calories in your diet. Don't go out there and spend your money on things like, let's see, I go back here to our text, uh, why spend money on what is not bread? Your labor on what does not satisfy. Don't waste your calories, your spiritual calories. Don't go after things that don't build you up with grace and forgiveness. What does that look like today? Don't do things to affirm yourself that are dishonest. Don't think that the amount of money you amass or the kind of toys that you have, you know, whoever gathers the most toys wins in the end. Well, actually, not. Don't do things that affirm your life with the frivolous stuff of life. Those are wasted calories in this spiritual banquet. But instead, spend your money on that which is good. Listen to me and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Define yourself by who you are in Christ. St. Paul in the epistle lesson is talking about that. He says, the people who are defined as Abraham's children are not all descendants of Abraham. Some of them come in by promise. And everyone who's a descendant of Abraham is not necessarily a child of Abraham. And there he's addressing the problem in Jesus' day when people didn't take Jesus as Savior, when they didn't recognize that he was the Messiah, when they rejected him. So then they were no longer children of Abraham, although they were his descendants. The point here is, define yourself by who you are as a child of God. That's the rich meal. The, the bread that is worth something. The bread that nourishes, not wasted calories. There's so much going on in our lives that are wasted spiritual calories but in this meal, and particularly where we receive the blessings that Christ won for us on the cross of Calvary in the bread and the wine, Christ's own body and blood, now that is a meal that is worth it.
That is a meal that gives substance and nourishment to our soul. That is where we receive the forgiveness that Christ won, the promise of eternal life with him, and the power to go out and share that with others. Because that's the next thing that Isaiah is talking about here in our text. This is a spiritual banquet that has plenty to share. Just like the feeding of the 5,000 when there were 12 baskets full of food left over, plenty to share. This meal in Isaiah's text is plenty to share too. And he describes it this way. I have established my covenant with David. I have made him a forget the word he uses, a, a, a sign to the nations. David had the promise of God that from his descendant, the Savior would be born. And he shared that in his Psalms. You and I have that same promise placed on us. We have that same covenant. And we have that promise to share with others. More than enough to eat, more than enough to, to nourish our soul, plenty leftovers to give to our neighbors and our friends and our family as we tell them about Christ on the cross for them. David, a witness to the nations. If I'd looked at my notes, I would have known. Witness to the nations. There on, on uh, the hillside, that desolate place, uh, Jesus saw the crowd and he had compassion on them. And he told the disciples, you give them something to eat. When they suggested, send them away to the villages to get something to eat. Jesus said, no, you give them something to eat. And that's what he tells us too. You give the people around you something to eat from this spiritual banquet. You share the message of salvation that you have in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because you've got more than enough for all, forgiveness for all your sins, promise for all that you can possibly hope for in this life and in the world to come. More than enough leftovers for everyone. You give them something to eat. Share that message of salvation with those around you. When God is talking about spiritual blessings, he never says, that's all you can eat. In his grace, he says to us, eat all you can. Receive the riches of my love, the forgiveness won by the death of my son, the promise of being children of Abraham and, and living in my presence forever. Eat all that you can of this spiritual blessing and share the rest. Give it to those around you who need to hear about their Savior too, with the stranger in your streets, the neighborhood down the block, the relative in your home. Share the abundance of this feast with everyone you meet. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand for the uh, offering and the musical offering. Well, no, I don't think you need to stand.
Now, please stand in body or in spirit as you are able for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the first night, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. For the forgiveness of your sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the eating and drinking of the holy body and the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with a believing heart will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Go in peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Let us thank our gracious God. And to you, O oh Lord, for your steadfast love. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, that you have again shown us forgiveness and love in the precious gift of your Son's body and blood. Grant us strength and faith through the sacrament that For those who have not heard, truly heard, the grace offered to all through the everlasting covenant given to David, but rely on the letter of the law, expecting justice instead of mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Spirit's work through word and sacrament to instill and strengthen the faith of all who call out to you in hope and trust, let us pray to the Lord. With one another and our brothers and sisters around the world, for all your promises which endure forever, let us thank our gracious God. For all who face this day with little or no food, with poor shelter and tattered clothes, without caring support or necessities, dealing with ongoing oppression and persecution, struggling through long-term illnesses and sudden man-made or natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. And especially for those in our midst who are dealing with illness and problems in their lives, for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, Brenda, Carolyn, and Lisa. For lymphoma, James. For those who are dealing with lung cancer, Stephanie and Kathleen and Patsy. Uh, brain tumors, Robert and Kelly and Dylan and Linnea, uh, Lynn Lee. Uh, breast cancer, Darlene, Shirley, and Trish. Liver cancer, Wayne and Matt. Pancreatic cancer, Alan and Cindy. Leukemia, Kendall. For those who are dealing with other cancers, Joe and Brett and Shannon, Josh, and Johnny, Howard, Gary, Janet, Carol, Doyle, Eva, for Kim and Sylvia and Cindy and Nell. Those who are dealing with bladder cancer, Gloria, bone cancer, Rob and Sherry. For those who are in the nursing home and shut in, Joyce and Carrie. We pray for healing and comfort for Bill and Ryan, Tori and Lisa. Other health issues, Joyce and Dale and Kim, Megan, Chris. Mary, Dolores, Sandra, and Greg. Those recovering from stroke, Vernell and Jennifer, Anita, Caitlin, and Ron. 
for those in hospice care, for Ron and for Bob, and other protection for Zach as he serves in the National Guard along the border, for Margie with a broken leg, for Amber awaiting a lung transplant, and other prayers of healing for Grace and Jenny and Gloria, for Ella, Marianne, Ophelia, Bob, Paulette, Sarah, Ashley, and Kimbra, and others who are mentioned in our thoughts and those who are known only to our Lord. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to visit, relieve, strengthen, and surround them with caring people and the precious gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. We bring all these things to you, O Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.